All right, folks, it's Thursday, January 24th. It's nearing 5.30 p.m. These greedy little pigs, they're all screaming for a new bale of alfalfa baleage. They're not going to get one. They'll get one in the morning, but they're going to have to wait. they got to finish up what they have, and they can pick at that hay. But uh, we're obviously in the heifer lot here. Heifers seem to be doing real good, seem to be happy, comfortable, and everything else and uh <laughs> well fed i'll admit that but uh yeah the other way Come on. this is all that's left of their alfalfa baleage a uh, lot of stems uh, stuff they don't prefer but uh too bad too sad you got to finish this up at least half of this will be gone anyway uh, and then tomorrow morning they'll get a new bale, which uh, they'll be right on track. It's a uh, bale alfalfa baleage every two days. They're going to start consuming even more and more as time goes on. It gets a little bit colder. But uh, they are only getting, you hear me now, you're only getting a bale every two days. So things are going good. That's my favorite right there, 1030. I, I really love the, the coloring on her. I just one of those things right that's right with this weather that we're having I'm currently not doing any feeding in the stanchions uh, we've got a pretty good amount of snow I moved the ranger in here for the winter so I can put the uh, tractor in the machine shed. <coughs> We've gotten a significant amount of snow here in the last week. We even had a good amount here today. Uh, in fact, we had a complete whiteout. I haven't seen a whiteout like that for a long time. A complete whiteout about 45 minutes ago. We never got those nasty temperatures today. Um, with wind chill, we did. But the actual temperature we did not. Uh, tonight isn't supposed to be too bad either with temperature. Wind chill, I guarantee, is going to be just below zero. But then tomorrow, tomorrow is the bad boy. Uh, tomorrow it's going to get cold as hell. We're looking at negative 16, negative 17 degrees. And I swear I heard on the radio today, and I need to, I need to look this up. They're calling for negative 35 wind chill tomorrow night. Which is going to be uh, which is going to be bad, but uh, let's head on in the barn. I'm going to show you a little couple art farting things I did here today, and uh, we're going to talk about bale counts. I've got a an exact bale count, and I'll show you what uh, what we have going here. I did have a bale sale today for sorghum. Ten bales went again on that trailer for uh, the big beef operation. I did a lot of cleaning up. These are all uh, end caps. Well, that's the kind of end caps I use. Bales of hay. And it's good stuff. Cows like eating that up. The heifers probably wouldn't. Cows, they're eating it. So, did a lot of cleaning up here today. That wind is nasty. It's nasty. Uh, you know what? Let's get a flashlight. It's a little dark in there. I'll show you what we're looking at here. Okay, let's talk about a couple of little fixes that I did here. There is uh, one, two, three, four problems. Four problem areas with the water lines that we're having. I fixed three out of the four. I guess we'll start here. This, uh, this bull and little steer here, they get their water by way of this water cup <clears throat> right here. Well, that's been freezing. 
because of this pipe here. So what I did, and if you caught the previous video, I put a whole pile of whoop de woos down here because that was where it was really bad. So it's, it's nice and hot down there, warm. I'm pretty sure that's going to be sufficient. Uh, I got this very hard piece of, uh, uh, what do you want to call this stuff? Anyway, I split it. It was, boy, it was a battle. But I got it around her. This is just to protect it from uh, the animals. And then I put this piece of insulation on what comes up to here. I am very confident that water cup will be running as normal tomorrow morning. Okay, the second little problem area that we've had here. Is this spot right here as you can tell that is where an original long run stopped I did not bother putting any more heat tape from there all the way to here to here I didn't well big mistake on my part this was uh, again another problem so I ended up getting another six foot piece I had to run the to town today I hate running to town when I'm home but uh, what are you going to do? And uh, simply put the six foot piece there and up to here. I am very confident as well this will be completely fine. Okay. Uh, this is the third problem spot that we were having. This is an original that I, I put on the beginning of the year. Uh, this is a new piece. I just added this new six foot piece here today. It was freezing, believe it or not, where it stops there to this original run. This six foot chunk here, I believe, I'm very confident that will, uh, it will not freeze up. Now, one more problem spot, and I didn't get to this yet because I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. <coughs> I'll figure it out. This little farting damn spot right here, this is all original uh, work that was done, where it stops right there to there, that will freeze up. Just that little bit of area. It's enough to make you mad. But um, that's the last problem spot. We'll see what happens. Um, <coughs> it, it's going to freeze, uh, especially Friday, Friday night. That small little itty bitten corner will freeze. I'm, I'm almost guaranteeing because it did the other day. Uh, actually, Sunday morning. We thought we had problems down there. It wasn't down there. That was all thought out. The problem was just this little bitty corner right there. So, hopefully we have a lot less problems. Uh, we're going to find out in the next 48 hours. Brought another heater in here. This is another 70,000 BTU. Uh, granted, it's not the Binford, uh, the old Binford 9000, but uh, these things put it on an extreme amount of heat. Um, so we've got two of those. And what we do, and what we're going to have to definitely do Friday night. Friday night, I'll be out here at about 10 p.m. Uh, definitely 10 p.m. and probably 2 a.m. to run these heaters just to warm up the barn a little bit. Um, and this will help out significantly. Now I've got that big Bertha. Uh, it's about a 230,000 BTU job site salamander. Uh, we filled it up and ran it today. It's in the machine shed. And uh, the fumes that come off of that thing are just nasty. So that's there in the event of an emergency or a tractor startup. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I have a feeling because it's kerosene and diesel, I have a feeling if we put half kerosene in it, which there's not right now, 
I think some of those fumes will go away. I mean, it's folks, it's nasty. I actually believe there's actually a problem with the darn thing. It is very new, um, but the newness is burnt off it, so to speak. Okay, let's talk about bail counts. <coughs> uh, I went into uh, kind of a... Uh, we're going to shut this down. I went in kind of a, uh, a little bit of a tizzy yesterday uh, because we're now on full-time hay feeding. Corn silage is all done. And, of course, something like that is going to make you double concerned even if you did your bale counts. So. <coughs> Dad and I had a very realistic sit down talk this morning with a piece of paper and a pencil paper and pencil proves all and we went through the days went through the numbers worst case scenarios best case scenarios what we came up with was this to squeak by we need 200 dry round bales of hay we're talking all dry hay here folks dry round bales 200 to squeak by to sleep at night without a worry in the world, 250. I also like to call that an insurance policy. I love the word insurance policy, as you might tell. Okay, as it turns out, uh, I was being a little bit worried and a little dramatic for nothing last night. Um, and I should have known better with my previous bail counts and what we've used up, but whatever. Uh, long story short, we have a grand total of 324 round bales of dry hay, which is music to my ears. There are zero concerns in the world with uh, our dry, dry hay needs this year. Now that's, that's everything. That's what I have piled out there. That's what's out at the bale yard on the other side of the hill. That even includes uh, six to is it eight more eight more dry bales that I used as end caps of the baleage lines. That's everything. That's grand total, 324. So uh, all is well, very comfortable, pretty happy about it. Does that mean that we're going to sell some? No, not a prayer. Um, I can see maybe uh, the month of March, taking a look at what we have again, putting a pencil to it, and... Uh, uh, selling some right now it's a it's a huge seller's market if if you want to go make a couple bucks right now selling dry hay you're going to make a couple bucks and then some we're not doing it we're going to keep it back because it's also going to create an absolute frenzy uh, you put an ad out there people are going to keep your number they're going to share your number which i know how bad this sounds but it's just going to create an absolute monster um, we're very fortunate to have more than what we need but right now to play things safe in life we're gonna keep it now you get a good friend of the family or a very extreme local neighbor that's uh, I'm gonna use the word suffering come on over bring your wagon I'll load you up payment when it's good for you <coughs> putting an ad out selling hay ain't happening Maybe come March, we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully we have a lot left come March. And I hate to say this, folks, but I see no reason why the price isn't going to be absolutely stupid. Um, it'd be nice to sell a few loads and help pay for uh, you know a lot of that uh, fertilizer. I fully expect about $6,000 in dry fertilizer this year. Uh, I don't know why I just shared that number. I usually don't share numbers with you guys. Uh, just to, it, it's a little too personal. So anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens, but uh, definitely safe and um, can sleep good tonight. Mark my words, with the way things are going around here right now and all the scuttlebutt and hearing what I'm hearing, there is no doubt in my mind in time to come there will be a story or something in the paper of hay theft. Um, that's reality these days. What are you going to do? Ah, these little turds are doing good. 
Looks like you uh, you guys got a real nice bale of some nice grassy second crop here. So they're good, good to go. And so are these. Everything's going real good. Feed stocked up. Heat job's done. It's just a matter of playing the waiting game now and seeing if the heat job actually is going to work. We're basically, I'd like to say, we are ready for this disastrous weather that is coming. <coughs> um, it should be okay. It's just going to be uncomfortable. I don't know. Folks, that's about it. Um, got another bale sale lined up tomorrow now that I'm fine and comfortable. Uh, and of course, we're talking about sorghum. Uh, in fact, I talked about, uh, I talked to that sorghum, to the uh, beef operator today, and I gave him a forewarning. I go, look, I'll, I'll promise you that load tomorrow. And obviously the one I loaded today. I go, but uh, I'm doing a bale count tonight. I'm going to see what I have, and uh, I might have to cheapen up our bale sales by about 20 bales or so, maybe 30. And uh, you could hear his heart drop, but uh, I'm like, ah, just, you know, we'll wait. We'll find out. But uh, good news to him is uh, we can remain, uh, we can have our, our, our verbal deal intact, and he's going to be fine. It's a big lifesaver for them. In fact, I'm, uh, I was going to touch about this on a different video, but what the heck. Uh, that big beef operator, this is their business, but I mean, I never said their name, so it doesn't matter. Uh, they're selling cattle now. Uh, they, they finally put a pencil to their needs, what they can get, what they can't get. Um, they just sold 60, 60 open heifers, and they're now selling cows, uh, bread cows. And um, they reiterated to me the price that they were getting for these bread cows, where they were shipping them, and it was uh, god-awful. What I'm trying to say is if I'd only known then what I know now, I'm talking about spring and fall this past year when I was buying up all this cattle, Holy mackerel almighty. To be honest with you, I'm tempted at picking up some of these uh, these bread cows. It's not in my numbers here for this right now this spring. I did not account for it. But depending on what he wants, and I'm not going to haggle. It's going to be the first price you give me is what you're wanting. I'm not going to undermine you. I'm either going to say yes or no. Um, we're going to see what he comes up with and uh, kind of go from there. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's an absolute shame uh, selling cattle because of feed. But uh, unfortunately, it's a smart thing that you're going to have to do if you encounter a feed problem. But anyway, folks, I mumbled on enough going on 18 minute video here. Um, that's about it. We'll uh, check in tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. And I'll uh, give you a little update on something going on around here. Got a few things going on. And uh, tomorrow is Friday, so shout out Friday. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Talk to you sooner and later.